Okay. Now this means that what you're going to get up um, above, if we change this angle from pi on 2 to something else, you're still going to get an arc of some kind. It's just going to be bigger or smaller than a semicircle. And whether it's bigger or smaller depends on the angle that we get. And so that's why on the bottom of the page here, I want you to have a look. Right? These segments, they change name. Actually, I'll stay with orange. They change name based on whether they are bigger or smaller than a semicircle. So if you have a really large segment up the top, we call that a major segment. Okay. Now have a look at the various sizes of theta as you go from left to right. Even though theta could be a variety of different angles, if that segment up the top is a major segment, what can you tell me about the size of theta? It's, it's sharp, isn't it? Do you see that? So it's an, like our literal word for sharp is, it's an acute angle. That's why we say if you have acute pain, it's a sharp pain, right? So if you have a major segment, you must have an acute angle. In other words, theta is between 0 and pi on 2. Now we've already looked at this special case in the middle. If you have a segment that is exactly, that is, is bounded by a diameter, right? So in other words, if I am... If I'm going through, if my, uh, my cord there goes through the center, then this is the angle in a semicircle. We saw this before. What angle do you get up there? Uh, exactly pi on 2. So it's a right angle, yeah? So you may even like to go ahead and put a corner up the top there. All right, like so. And our last case over here on the right-hand side is that if we sort of push that cord up so that you have a small segment up the top. It's not called a small segment, by the way, formally. The opposite of major is minor. So if you have a minor segment, what kind of angle do you get? You get a, an obtuse angle. It's very, very wide up there. You can see at the top, so it's obtuse. Now, what we've been doing is we've been thinking about change the segment, right? And therefore, you change the angle. And that's from pi on 2 to pi. But what we tend to get, if you turn the page over, is actually in reverse order. We are going to get an equation that is an angle, it gives you an angle, and you have to work out, are you in a major segment or a minor segment? Will you get a major arc or a minor arc? So let's have a look at these together. I'd like us to, and this is just to not worry about any of the algebra or anything like that, right? Let's just think about where this is going to go. We want to construct arcs that will approximately fit um, these particular points and these particular angles that I've defined for us up here. Okay, so first thing, and I'll just go to the previous page so you don't have to flick back and forth. My angle here is pi on 3. Is it acute, obtuse, or right angled? It's, it's acute, right? Pi on 3, so that's 60 degrees. So are you going to get a major segment or a minor segment? It's a major segment. So small angle means a big segment. Okay, so therefore, I'm going to be drawing a big arc to make my big segment around here, do I start at the top left or at the bottom right? I've labeled them very helpfully for you. I'm going to start at the bottom right because this is Z1 and I'm going to go in which direction? Anti-clockwise, very good. So therefore, I'm going to get something going off in, in this direction. Do you see that? I'm going anti-clockwise and you can see rather than draw something like this, that's a small, that's going to give me a small segment, right? I've gone um, out to, way out to get like a very large segment, right? So I'm just going to do this very messily for you, right? You can see I'm going to go anti-clockwise and that, that looks really terrible and messy. You'd, you'd be like sort of shading that in pencil to get the rough shape and then you say, okay, that's roughly where I'm going to go and you can check this for yourself by finding a point on the circumference of the arc you've just drawn and checking to see, does that, does that look like pi on 3 to you? I mean, if you had a protractor with you, you could actually measure it. But at the moment, I'm not focusing on the exact, like the precision here. I'm not asking for intercepts or coordinates. I just want you to get the general sense. Uh, have a look over at 2. You've got different points, uh, but do you have an acute or obtuse angle? You've got an acute angle again, so you're going to get another major segment. I'm going to pause and let you have an explore through this page and see what kind of shapes you get. Okay, so have a go, and then I'll show you my, um, my properly neat ones that I did earlier on. Okay, off you go.
So as you've seen me do before, this is my chef's equivalent of here's one I prepared earlier. Um, because it really is quite tricky to draw these. If you, we've, I've said this to a few of you, if you have not been drawing with a pencil, um, stop, like get a pencil, okay? Borrow a pencil, um, you desperately need one. This is what happens. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, so a cautionary tale over there. Thank you, Mr. Oksinski. What I want you to notice is, um, when you have a look at my arcs, right? the first thing is you can clearly see where you get major arcs and minor arcs. Major arcs and minor arcs. And they are matched up with acute angles and obtuse angles, respectively. Right? Small angle, big arc. Uh, I want you to notice, for example, when you look at my pi on 3 and my pi on 4, you can see my arc is bigger for my pi on 4, right? That's because a smaller angle will give you a bigger arc. If you took the limit, as theta approaches 0, you are getting closer and closer and closer to a circle, right? Because if you were having like an angle like that, you'd have to go all the way around the circle to create that angle. Now I also want you to notice, um, actually sort of a tricky sneaky thing which will help you, but I haven't talked about it because we didn't have the time. One of the circle properties um, which you may have encountered at the end of year 10, but there's a good chance you didn't, is that if you are, and put this onto your diagram right now by the way, if you are to draw a chord um, that has that, that interval, right? And if you were to take, to go back to what we had a look at last lesson, the perpendicular bisector of that chord, so um, that looks okay to me there. So what I've done is um, a perpendicular bisector, so I've sliced my chord in half and I've done it roughly at right angles anyway. Um, the perpendicular bisector of a chord will always pass through the center of a circle. So you can know if you're roughly in the right spot or if your circle is like gone lopsided if that doesn't look anywhere near the center of the circle that your arc is a part of, okay? so. Uh, line from the center bisects um, the chord at right angles. So then the other thing I want you to notice is, again because I radically distrust myself, is that you notice I put those arrows on? Those arrows along each of the arcs? Why do you think I've done that? What's that about? Yeah, it's for me to make sure, did I do this anti-clockwise or not, right? And so that you don't have to put those arrows on, but for me it's just a check. I'm like, yep, no, I got it headed in the right direction so I can be confident I'm showing you guys the right solution, okay? Now, I'm going to pause there. You've got two things that I want you to do with the 20 minutes that we have left. Number one, as usual, there are tasks assigned on Canvas, and you can work on with those. But the next direction from here is we've all been quite vague on here, right? Like I deliberately gave you no coordinates just so you would focus on the shape. I want you to have a look at the top right-hand corner of the board there. I ninja it onto the board in the um, red there. That's an equation that will give you an arc, right? And this time I've given you coordinates and I've given you an exact angle and I'd like you to this time try and work out the Cartesian equation and like intercepts and the center and all that kind of thing of that particular arc. I've tried to make it relatively nice and neat for you so it's not awkward and off at a funny angle. You should be able to work it out with some geometric reasoning. I'd advise you maybe start there and then go to the exercise.